In this video, we will be covering the Stinger Cleaning Head Complete Rebuild, as well as tips to properly set the head speed to maximize cleaning efficiency. Let's start by looking at the five steps necessary to disassemble your unit. Step one is removing the cage. Place a long screwdriver through the opening of the cage to hold it in place, then use a wrench to loosen up the cap. Do not remove the cap at this point. Next, use a 3 16 Allen wrench to remove all four screws, securing the swivel to the cage. At this point, you're now ready to remove the swivel. Do so by tipping it up and lifting. Step two is removal of the swivel head. Use a 7 8 wrench to hold the swivel nut securely in place. Use a 3 quarter inch wrench to place on the head and loosen. Note, once you break it loose, you can easily spin it off the rest of the way by hand. Step 3, removing the mounting plate. Remembering that earlier we broke loose the swivel cap, we can now simply unscrew the mounting plate by hand. Step 4, removing the shaft and bearing assembly. Simply lift up on the shaft and bearing assembly to remove it. Note, this area may need to be cleaned out before replacement. Step 5, removing upper and lower seals. Use an 11 millimeter wrench to remove both the upper and lower seal. Note, the upper floating seal is always located in the cap on top of the stem. Note, the press fit lower seal is always located in the spray head. If at this point you need parts or tech support, please call Driplock at 877-374-7562. If not, let's proceed to steps 1 through 7 on the rebuild. Rebuild Step 1, Upper Seal Identification and Replacement. Although the bodies of the upper and lower seals look the same, they have very distinct differences. By flipping over the assembly, you will see that on the upper floating seal, it has a carbide pipe that is made to free float inside of this assembly. This allows the seal to properly wear as it moves in and out during use. Begin threading the seal by hand. Now use your 11 millimeter socket to snug it down. Note the seal should sit flush on the stem when tight. Step two, press fit seal identification and replacement. The press fit lower seal is made distinctly different from the upper seal. You'll notice that the metal is formed to create a foot in which the seal itself rides on. Without this foot in place, the carbide seal would simply fall back into the spray head making the unit unusable. Begin threading the seal by hand. Now use your 11 millimeter socket to snug it down. When the seal is properly threaded on, it should be flush with the top of the head. Step three, reinstalling shaft and bearing assembly. When reinstalling your shaft and bearing assembly, Always check to ensure the bearings are in free and operating order. Spin the shaft freely, making sure there's no grit or grime holding it up or causing it to seize. Then simply drop in to the cap. Step four, reinstalling bottom mounting plate. Reinstall the mounting plate with the swivel in the upside down position. This makes it easier to place the mounting plate on and screw in place. Simply hand tighten for now. Step five, reinstalling the high pressure spray head. Use 7H wrench to hold the swivel nut in place. 
hand thread the swivel head on as tight as you can go. Use the 3 quarter inch wrench to secure down the head. Step 6. Reinstalling the protective cage. To avoid repeating steps, please test your head speed before replacing the cage. With your head speed now properly set, please place your swivel head back into the unit, slipping it through the gap provided. Align your screw holes up with the swivel body and cage, then simply begin tightening down each of the four Allen screws by hand. Use your 3 16 Allen wrench to tighten down all screws, ensuring you're using the lock washers provided. Step 7. Securing the swivel cap to the mounting plate. Place a long screwdriver through the opening of the cage to hold it in place, then use a wrench to secure down the cap tightly. Setting proper head speed to maximize cleaning efficiency is essential. Here we will show you a couple of examples of improperly set heads, then move on to show you a properly set head at our recommended factory setting of 300 RPM. When a wash arm does not have enough offset pitch to create the head to spin, a zero turn is the end result. This equals zero cleaning efficiency. On the contrary, a head that's set at its maximum or high RPM setting can exceed 2000 RPM with the end result being a cleaning reach of only 6 to 8 inches from the end of the spray tip. A properly set head reaches a speed of around 300 RPM and has a max impact range at approximately 18 inches from the end of the spray tip. The Stinger Head Setter Tool is a new device that we've developed to help ensure that you set your wash arms equally on both sides of the head. It has a bolt stop that slides in and out to allow the arm pitch to be set and locked in place. It also has a throat stop that allows you to have a fixed point when you clamp on so you accomplish the same depth on the head each time. A key point when using the head setter is to make sure that you have the jaw tension on your vice grips set very tight. You want to make sure that when you grip down that the jaw doesn't have any way to slip. Once you're jawed on good, you can use the set bolt backed in or out to adjust the arm pitch. You can walk it from a zero setting all the way up to a 90 degree pitch. We know our factory setting is generally located right off the corner of the wash block. So we're going to rock this thing back around. You'll notice where we're pointing here. And if you'll watch us turn the bolt, we'll come past that, what will be the equivalent of two to three millimeters. If we're not there, we just a little bit more. And then we turn around and hit our set screw to lock the arm in place. It's always a good idea to use your half inch wrench to cinch that bolt in tightly as that will be the setting you're going to use on the opposite side of the head. With the wash arm loose, you'll want to take a 3 8 wrench and pivot freely the wash arm until it hits the stop. At that point, you're prepared to take your 3H wrench and cinch down on the banjo bolt. At this point, you're ready to set the other side of the head. Pay particular close attention to the lower jaw and watch how it easily slips by. You need to make sure and allow for that pivot of the jaw before you clamp down fully with your vice grips to ensure you have a good depth set stop each time. Use your 3 8 wrench to set the banjo bolt and you're ready to test.
If your initial test resulted in a zero spin or a very low RPM, you can easily come in and readjust the head. A quick tip is to flip the vice grips upside down, moving the stop out of the way. This gets you access to the banjo bolts and allows you to easily move around the head. With your banjo bolts now free, it's time to rejaw back onto the head. Again, like before, make sure that stop is set on the jaw and is butting up against the head itself. And always watch that left lower jaw to make sure it's not slipping. Loosen your lock nut and you're ready for resetting. The key to dialing in your speed is being patient. Make small incremental adjustments. Remember, a couple of turns on the bolt can result in two and three millimeter jumps at a time, so take it slow. Once you've found that setting, lock in your lock nut, tighten down your banjo bolt, repeat that process on the other side of the head, and you'll be all set. A quick note to add is you will need a much more aggressive setting when using low volume and low PSI units as these are the two things that cause the head to rotate and spin. Follow the same process as before using small increments when adjusting and soon you'll find the ultimate setting to maximize your cleaning efficiency.